answer is no. Uh, it, it would not. These are two different values. Uh, so, so that is uh, that is why uh, you uh, they they specify you m must understand which method they are using: 0.2 percent offset or 0.5 percent extension method. In reality, the 0.2 percent this method uh, I have used quite a bit. Uh, the 0.5 percent extension. Um, I have not used very much at all in, 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 in actual work. Uh, I don't know among you, any of you have ever used the 0.5% extension or not. However, both these methods, it's not a very difficult concept, but uh, these, uh, these uh, two methods you need to uh, know uh, for the test. All right, now um, let's, let's uh, get uh, make things a little more interesting and I want you to solve a couple of problems uh, with me. This slide, the next probably 10 or 12 slides uh, will help us answer this question and solve this problem. But for your reference, what we are talking about is the word flexure. If you're looking at NCEES documents where they say, well, these are the topics that you need to know, they use the word flexure. Guys, what we're doing right now is dealing with that flexure. All right? Specifically, we are looking at bending stress in beams. Because a beam, when a beam is exposed to loading in a certain moment, moment in terms of shear and moment diagrams that we reviewed together last Tuesday. Well, when a beam is exposed to moment, or let's say a moment diagram, loads that, that cause a certain moment diagram, then the stresses that are produced in the beam are called bending stresses. In this case, they say, please compute the maximum bending stress in compression and also the bend, maximum bending stress in, in tension. All right? So uh, I need your attention because this is a very important concept and very high probability you will have something like this on the test. So uh, let's learn it together. All right? So that's the first part of this problem. The second part of the problem, um, the second part of the problem says, also, please compute the shear stress at the neutral axis and also at a section six inches from the bottom. They're talking about the neutral axis of the cross section. The cross section, as you notice here, is a inverted T section. All right, and here we are given the loading. Let's look at what we are given. Uh, they've given us the beam. This, this is the beam, and they give you the location of the supports, the types of the supports, and the loads. In addition to that, they also give you the, the uh, shape of the cross-section. The shape of the cross-section is an inverted T-section. You can see on the right-hand side. But something else they've given you here. Please pay attention. This INA equals 97 inches to the fourth. What do you think that is? I stands for the moment of inertia. Moment of inertia of the cross section, in this case, about the neutral axis. All right? Thank you, Amanda. Uh, and Jonathan says uh, moment of inertia at the, uh, at the neutral axis. Guys, the moment of inertia concept is very important. And you need to know how to calculate the moment of inertia. In this particular problem, the moment of inertia is given to you. Pay very close attention, and if they've given you the value, just use it. Don't waste time trying to calculate it. All right. In this case, they've given it to you. In a, in a later problem today, I will show you exactly how you would go about calculating the moment of inertia. But here, uh, they've given this to you. All right. Let's start with, uh, with the first part of this uh, this problem and the part that I have um, underlined in red, finding the bending stress in compression and the bending stress in tension. All right, 
on slide 15, what I have shown is the shear diagram. I'm not going to go over how we constructed the shear diagram. I showed you the process last week. So what I need for you to do, please do this for me. Uh, not right now, but later when you study this, uh, these problems, don't just take my shear diagram, cover it, and do it on your own. Make sure that you know how to draw the shear diagram. Now, next slide shows the moment diagram. See down here. Down here, this is the moment diagram. All right? And once again, we will be using this moment diagram. Please accept it as the correct moment diagram, but I want you to do it on your own to make sure that you, based on what I showed you the other day, you can actually draw this on your own. And the moment diagram here, certain part of it is below the x-axis. Here, negative, below the x-axis. Also this part. And then certain segment of it is specifically this part is uh, the beam is exposed to positive moments. All right? That is important because, and I really need your close attention here, you need to understand the effect that positive moments have on a beam. And what, and what I need for you to do is take a look up here. You see this? You see that? That is what happens when the beam, a beam, is subjected to positive, uh, to positive moments. All right? In other words, Positive moments cause the beam to bend like this. Therefore, this would be moments that are positive will call, would cause the beam to bend that way. And you can remember by saying positive moments are happy moments. Let me see if I can erase that and then another way of looking at it is this when we have a po positive moments cause tension in the bottom take a look here this is positive moment here and let me change the color this is very, very important what I'm telling you right now. Co uh, positive moments cause the bottom to, be, to lengthen, to be in tension, and the top of the beam is in compression. Now, the reverse of that happens when the beam is subjected to negative moments like this. Negative moments cause the beam to flexure this way. Now tell me, which part is in tension, top or bottom? The top, because that stretches, that's in tension. All right, so write this down. Negative moments cause tension on top, compression in the bottom. Positive moments cause tension in the bottom and compression on the top. Remember this because I'm going to come back to it. To keep things in perspective, I want you to understand what it is that we are doing. We are, we are calculating what we call the bending stress in beams. The equation is this, this one. This is the equation. Sometimes it's referred to as the Fletcher equation. Now, what I need for you to do is to understand the ingredients in that equation. Sigma is the bending stress in beams. It's equal to mc over i. Let's start from the denominator. i is the moment of inertia. 
So the denominator is the moment of inertia of the cross section about its own centroidal axis. The numerator, m, is the moment. And we get that value from the moment diagram. If it is the bending stress at a specific point along the beam, you use the exact value at that specific point along the beam. Otherwise, if it's the maximum stress that you're calculating, it would be either the maximum positive moment or the maximum negative moment. The one thing I have not defined in this, in this equation is C. So let's see if we can identify what this uh, C value is. And the C value, guys, is the distance between the neutral axis to either the top or bottom. All right? And some of you are giving me the, the answer to this question. Uh, Joseph, Donald, Jonathan, uh, Gary, they're telling me that C value is the distance between the centroid and either to the uh, distance to the centroid from, uh, from the, 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 the neutral axis to the top or bottom, all right? So the question becomes, can you make up your mind? Is it the distance to the top or bottom? All right, guys, here's what we're going to do. I'm looking at uh, slide number 16. The C value is the distance from the neutral axis to the top or the neutral axis distance to the bottom. Now, which you use is based on whether you are measuring the, the, ten, the stress in tension or compression. All right? So let's assume that we are, now I want everybody to do this along, along with me. Let's assume that we are trying to find the maximum bending stress in the region where the beam is subjected to um, negative moments. So in negative moments, the bottom is in tension or compression. Negative moments, the bottom will be in compression. So I think you can see this here. That we call C sub C, all right? So where the beam is subjected to negative moments, compression occurs in the bottom. So the distance between the neutral axis and the bottom, we call it C sub C. The subscript C stands for compression. Now, in the negative bottom, uh, in the, uh, the area where the beam is subjected to negative uh, moments, but the distance from the neutral axis to the top, what do we call that? C sub T. Why? Because with a negative moment region, the top is in tension. In the portion of the beam where the beam is subjected to positive moments, the reverse happens. Now, here's what I want you to do. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me, but let's take a look. I'm going to do a uh, a double evaluation. I'm going to analyze the beam for the negative moment region and also the positive moment region. I want you to uh, go ahead and, and make sure you understand where these numbers come from. In the negative moment region, let me switch back. In the negative moment region, C sub T this distance, neutral axis to the top. So what's the value of it? Who can do the subtraction? It's 9 minus 3.5. What do we get? Helen, help me out. Uh, yeah, Matthew says 5.5. Helen, I hope that you agree with that. So C sub T in the negative moment region is the distance between the neutral axis and going to the top, which is indeed 5.5. 5 